Hey guys, so this is a real life example of a report that my team used to put together back in the day. And we used to send about 18 to 20 of these reports every single day and they had to be manually done because they were created off of a pivot table which had a data set in the background. And it took so much time. What if I told you that I can take a report that'll take you 5, 10, 15 minutes to run on your own and automate it in less than a minute? Continue watching. So in today's episode, I want to do another version of some Excel automation. Again, this is actually a real life scenario that happened uh, to my team back uh, a couple of years ago. But uh, when I was working for a large grocery retailer, um, you know, one of the things that we used to do is we used to do a lot of analysis at the department level. And the problem is, is that, you know, when I'm looking at data like this, so I've simplified this data and obviously this is fictitious data, but you know, you can expect stuff like this in the real world. And one of the things we used to do is by department, we actually used to do an analysis. Um, the most basic analysis we used to do is we used to say, all right, by quarter and by year, what are the average sales and what's your average margin rate for a specific department? In this case, it's sports, bakery, pet, produce, and meat. And we would have what we call category leads or category uh, VPs. And what we would do is we would send them a summary, sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes on a weekly basis. So I had a team of analysts that would get together and you know they would start looking at this by department. And the problem is a VP only wants to see their department. They don't want to see everything else. So we used to get a massive file um, and you know we used to have to split out some of this data. And if you want to know how to do that, look at my previous tutorial, which I will link above right now, or you'll see it in the description. And it's a great way to actually start parsing out your data into different components or into different departments. Well, now that I have that, the other thing they wanted to understand was they wanted to see a pivot. So they wanted to see something like this, where I had year down here, I had Q1, Q2, you know, Q3 and Q4, and then the average sales, average sales here and something like average margin here. And what my team would do is they would go in and they would literally create a pivot and so, you know, if you wanted to do this, we would have to add in a pivot table. So for example, I would go to insert, I would go to pivot table, I would select the range like so, and then I would say, okay, and then start creating my pivot. Now this is all good and all for one or two different areas, but imagine having to do this every single day for every single department and then emailing these off to these executives. And so, you know, I've created a sort of a makeshift little pivot table here, and then you can also create a pivot chart out of this. So they would want to see something like, let me see if I can actually create it. Something like this, where I have, instead of sum, it'll be average. So you have, you know, 2017, so this isn't ordered, but you know, you can order this eventually. I don't know how this creeped over here, but you know, this is the funny stuff sometimes Excel does. But you know, they would want to know, uh, you know what what this trend looks like and margin here is not visible because it's the scale is so small so I would have to go ahead and create a secondary y-axis and so we'd be doing this every single time and then sending this out to them with a little note in there explaining you know what's happening now what if I told you that this process you know if you were to go through every single department and do this every single day and to build these charts and to build this stuff you know, took upwards, I mean, there was a bit of automation put in place, but took about 30 to 40 minutes, if not maybe an hour actually, of a specific analyst time who would just do this for about, I believe it was 17 or 18 different main departments we did it for. And then some of those larger departments had very large sub departments. Like for example, if you look at grocery, grocery is built into various different types of sub departments. Um, and when you look at that, when you look at something like that, it becomes, you know, a lot more complicated because you're doing a lot more of them. So I think he used to spend upward probably about an hour to maybe maybe an hour to an hour and a half or so a day putting this together um, because there was no automated way to do this. The way that we extracted the data was through SQL, but there wasn't really a great system back then. I'm not sure now. And I think part of the reasons why companies, at least back then, maybe even some now are a little bit afraid to start using a lot of robust systems for this is specifically for privacy. I mean, a lot of this information, I mean, this is very top level information, but when you get down to specifics behind this, you know, when you're looking at advertising funds and when you're looking at, you know, vendor promotions and, you know, vendor funds given to you, there's a lot of secrecy in some of those numbers because they're very proprietary to that specific retailer. 
And so privacy was a big constraint, which is why we used to do a lot of this in-house and we started building tools like what I'm about to show you right now. You know, and just on the note of privacy, I would say privacy is one of those things that's becoming a hot topic nowadays, you know, just with all the incidents that have happened with big social networks and, and whatnot. And it's always important for you to protect yourself. And, you know, and so when I'm doing a lot of my own analytics and I want to protect myself against, you know, phishing uh, incidents, or I want to protect myself from, uh, or, you know, just keep my information private, I actually use a VPN and uh, I'll use proxies, I'll use VPNs in combination. And the VPN I use is actually called NordVPN. I'll put a link in the description for it. I believe right now they're actually having a promo. Uh, and I got to tell you guys, I've been using these guys for about four years now and I've never had an issue. Um, so if you're interested, check it out. I'll put the link in the description anyways. So now let me go ahead and walk you through how I've automated all of this in under a minute. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to give you the demo. So let's go ahead and open this up. So let me get rid of this stuff because I don't want it to impact my demo. So let's go ahead and delete all this stuff. So what we've got is the bare bones. You know, the data that was received is sales, bakery, pet, produce, and meat. And I can make this all a little bit bigger for us. But the numbers are different for all of them. Uh, again, fictitious numbers. And so I want to create something similar to that pivot and that chart that I showed you that I can just ship off to whomever I need to. So let's go ahead and look at this as a demo. All right, so what you're gonna see in this folder is you're gonna see two files. You're gonna see one that's called sampledata.xlsx, which is this file here. And then the other one you're gonna see is the actual script that I made. So let me give you the demo and then we'll walk through the script afterwards on how it works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm opening up a terminal console here. All right, so let me just make sure I'm in the right directory here. All right, which I am. So let me go ahead and close this because I want to make sure that just hit save. I don't know what I did, but it's always good to save. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So the first things first, we're going to write, we're going to run Python. And so let me actually make this a little bit bigger for us. All right, so just I made that a little bit bigger. But what you're going to see here now is I'm going to run this command. So Python and it's called pivot charts.py. All right, so when I run that, it's going to ask me for a file path, very similar to the to the script that we created last week. I drag and drop in here and I just get rid of that white space at the end. And so now what it's going to ask me is it's going to ask me for the index and the index would be what are the X axis that I basically want to put in here. So I want to do two. I want to look at year and we have to make sure that we write it exactly as it is in the Excel file. So year and quarter. And so what that's going to do is it's going to first give me all my years and then it'll give me my quarters next to it. No commas, no, uh, you know, periods or nothing like that in between. And so we're just going to hit enter. Now, what are the columns that I want? So I'm interested in sales and I'm interested in margin. So now as soon as I hit enter, I'm not going to hit it yet, but let me tell you what it's going to do. It's going to create a file for each one of those different departments. So it should create five files. In that, it's gonna have the pivot and it's gonna have the chart ready for us. So let's go ahead and run this. And I was probably doing some debugging, but I'll get rid of that. And so here you see it's got produce, sports, pet, meat, and bakery. So let's go ahead and open bakery. Now when I open bakery, what it's doing here is, so it's gonna give me the year, then it's gonna give me the quarter, the margin rate in that quarter. But I'll show you something else after and you'll see that it's gonna do the average margin rate and then the sales value. And here you see it actually plots a second y-axis on its own. And so it's got your x-axis, which is your year quarter, because that's the order you put it in. You said year first and quarter. It's got your sales axis here, and then it's got your margin axis here. And so let's open another one just to make sure that it's done it right. And so when I open this, it says produce up there, which is good. Uh, it's got different numbers, which is great. And the chart looks different. And let's open the third one up. Let's open up sport. Okay, so sport looks a little bit different as well. The other one's 41, this is 44, and the sales number is different. So you can go ahead and, and tweak this way you want. So let's run this a different way now. So let's go back and let's delete these files. I wanna make sure that we're generating absolutely brand new files. So now we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna write it the other way around. We're gonna say this time, so let's, let's drag in the file path, but let's say I wanted to know the average rate by quarter. So this time, I'm just gonna say quarter. I don't care what year it is. I just want to see if there's any relationships in the quarter. And let's just look at sales. All right. So now when I, when I, when I go ahead and open bakery, it's going to show me the average 
in that quarter. And it's going to show me what the sales amount was in that specific quarter on average for those last four or five, whatever years it was, which is great. So now I can see this view as well. I can do the same thing for margin. Um, if I wanted, I can do the same thing by year by sales, year by sales and margin. So this just gives you an idea of some of the flexibility you can have. And then I can write a really quick script, like I mean within five or 10 lines of code tops that will automatically email this to the right owner as well. And you can run this on a daily basis. Put this in a job, run it, let it go, and it will work. There's no question about it. All right, so now let's go through the code and see what that looks like. So what I've done here is I'm using pandas, obviously, as my data frame. I'm using the matplotlib. I'll explain what bytes.io is and the OS path that we used last week. And so what I'm asking you to do is go ahead and take in the file path, take the index, and then take the data. And so this is where it was printing stuff where it shouldn't have. So let's go ahead and delete that. We don't need it. Um, then I've said, all right, show me what extension this file is, which is going to be XLSS in this case and then the file name and then the path okay so we're just we're just doing some basic path syntax here and so what well, now what i'm doing here is i'm saying set xl equal to pd.xl file and then in brackets file and what i want to do is i want to create a list of my sheet names so if i've got one sheet it's going to return a list of one sheet names if i've got 10 sheets it's going to return a list of 10 sheet names and then I'm creating a list object in which I'm going to go ahead and iterate through all the different sheet names and store it. And then I can go ahead and call that by using an index. So I can say file zero is equal to sheet one, which may be bakery. File one is going to be equal to sport. File two is going to be equal to pet and so forth. And so once you have this list object with all the different sheet names in there, I want to go ahead and iterate through all of these different sheet names. And I want to create a data frame for every single one of them. So again, file zero may be sport. And so it's going to create a data frame for sport for me. File one could be pet and it'll do the same thing. And it'll keep doing that. And then along the way, I'm saying, go ahead and create a pivot table out of that specific data frame. So if it's file zero, we're going to be going through this loop only on file zero first. When it's done, this entire loop, it'll go back and then do file one and so forth. And so this command here is what creates the pivot table. And what I'm suggesting is we do it based on the index. And this is piv.index, which is going to be the user's input based on whatever they put in. And then values is going to be piv data based on whatever they put in. All right, so next is what I've done is I've said, let's call the actual bar uh, an image. So what's, what's happening in that Excel file is it's actually taking an image, taking a picture of it and storing it into the Excel file. And in order for me to do that, I needed to create a value call or variable called image in which is going to hold the actual plot value. So I basically taken my pivot table, added dot plot at the end of it, and then told it what I wanted to do. And in this case, it's a bar plot. The secondary axis is Y. And if I've entered more than one item in there, then it's going to take the last item as my Y axis. Typically, you shouldn't have more than two. It's going to clutter up your graph. But even if I had three, say I had sales for... Let's say I had regular sales, promoted sales, and then I had margin rate. Your regular sales and promoted sales would most likely be on the same scale, so it's okay. Um, so that's how this works, really. Uh, width is I want to have a slight gap in between my bar graphs. So I don't want it to be all cluttered together, and then that's a size. And then the name is going to be based on whatever sheet name it is. So if this is pet, it'll be pet, and so forth. Now, in order for me to save this as an image, I need to convert it into a bytes I.O object and then that's going to allow me to store it in some kind of a variable uh, and so when i go down and actually write it down when i and then this is basic syntax writer equals pd.xl writer i've reserved these two columns so one is going to be my path so that's basically the path that i got it from it's going to put it back in the same directory where your original file was and then slash the sheet name so it's going to go in my original directory and it's going to be called, you know, this is the sheet name, meat.xls, bakery.xls, and, and, and so forth. That's why you have, this would be where it's stored. This is the name, .xlsx. And that's basically how that works. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and insert the image in column or in cell F1. And I'm returning image data, which is basically the graph in this case. So if we go you'll see that all of these are actually stored starting in F1. And you can go ahead and change that to whatever you want. 
but you see that it actually starts in F1, which is right over there. And if I put D1, it would start there. I only put it out because, you know, I may have uh, a certain number of columns and I didn't want it to overlap it. Otherwise, you'd have to manually move it. And so that's really it, guys. That's how the code works. Um, great way to automate things. Great way to even give control back to the user so that if they wanted to pull some kind of a custom query, they can do that. You know, generally speaking, the way we did this is we built something like this and we put it behind a user interface and they were able to go in and tinker around with the data. Um, but, you know, the feedback that we got from them was just, it was amazing because they weren't waiting on people to generate this data, nor did I have an analyst or a couple of stressed out analysts to get this out on time to a bunch of senior level executives. And then at the same time, for people that didn't want to go ahead and pull this, we had automated jobs that would actually go ahead and... Uh, you know, kick this off in the background and then automatically send the email out to them. So this is another good example of some automation that uh, you guys can put in place. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you later on. Thanks. Take care and bye.